I'll get started with a quick introduction on uh, Nolscape. So I'm Rajiv Jairaman, the founder and CEO of Nolscape. And uh, as some of you already know, we've been in the talent transformation space for some time now. More specifically, these days, we are solving the digital talent crisis through experiential learning. We believe that this methodology holds a key for transforming talent at scale and in an accelerated fashion. Uh, some of the traditional learning models are falling short and we need to do something about this. So our um, rapid upskilling approach has two parts to it. One for the learner, we create uh, immersive learning experiences, simulations that cover 100 plus behavioral leadership and future skills. Um, and uh, for the organization, whatever we are doing, we are able to do at scale and we produce uh, talent dashboards that can help the organization um, you know, come to terms with uh, the new talent strategy. So I request all of you to put yourselves on mute. Uh, so preparing future ready talent, uh, there are two components uh, that we think about. One is leading now, essentially all the things that uh, organizations need uh, for running their business as of today. That's 100 plus competencies I spoke about. And leading next is all about building digital mindsets where we have a cutting portfolio of future focused competencies to uh, build digital mindsets and skill sets. So that's the area of work for us. And these are some of the organizations that we've worked with in the past. And um, some of you may know, I published this book called Clearing the Digital Blur uh, roughly two years ago. And these are the companies globally that we have worked with, uh, you know, partnering with them to build digital capabilities at scale. So this could start all the way from building digital awareness to building digital strategy to building digital leadership and culture. So we've covered a, a wide gamut of, um, you know, solutions with some of these organizations. And uh, the core of what we do is simulation led. Um, some of you may again know about this portfolio. Uh, we've been innovating on uh, immersive learning for a pretty long time. And there's a pretty large portfolio of simulations we have today. And in today's session, we are happy to announce one more addition to this uh, portfolio, which will be about digital transformation championing. So, for each of these products, you uh, get a chance to get very in-depth report, both at an individual level, also at an organization level. And this um, report allows you to benchmark scores across business units, organizations, and industries as well. So I think this is quite cutting edge when it comes to learning analytics. So at this point, uh, I think it will be quite appropriate uh, to give a little bit of a context on why we chose digital transformation championing as a key topic. We've been working on this area for the last four years now. And uh, one key thing that stood out is that organizations do need champions internally because it's not a simple change we are talking about. This is a transformative end-to-end uh, -end change that's happening starting from business models to ways of working. So I just wanna give you a quick context before uh, we hear from Ravi on uh, how Siemens uh, managed to do this at scale in their organization. So I always like to engage with my audience. Um, we know the, the industry 4.0 concept, right? Uh, this is not the first transformative change we've uh, seen in the history of business. Um, of course, the first major transformation happened, uh, let's say in the US uh, to begin with, you know, there's a lot of data around this. For bulk of the industry to go from an agrarian economy farm-led economy to a factory-led economy. Can you tell me how long that process took? Please use the chat window. Let's have an interactive session here. How long did that process take for majority of jobs on the farming sector to move to factories? So Mayur has answered it and quite correctly as well. In fact, most of you have answered it uh, quite correctly. So Mayur gets uh, 10 virtual points, fastest finger first. Um, so it took about 100 years, right, roughly, for majority of these farm jobs to shift to factories. And of course, from there, we saw another major transition from factories into service-led jobs, which is what most of us are into these days. How long did that process take? Yeah, you got it right. I think the intuition is bang on, uh, right? 45, uh, Norizal actually is quite uh, accurate. The range 40 to 50 years is uh, what research is telling us. So from 100 years to 40 to 50 years, 
now we are already in the middle of a major transformation right uh, digital is not new it has just gotten accelerated because of the pandemic how long do you think that this transformation will last for after what year do you think this will no longer become a special topic of interest this would have become so ubiquitous so baked into the business that we take it as business as usual how long is the end to end cycle for this transformation you think yeah so um, experts say this is anywhere from 5 to 10 years we are probably bang in the middle of it right um and that's essentially what we need to bear in mind it is not 100 years it is not 50 years we don't have the luxury of time so acceleration is absolutely important and we have thousands and thousands of people who are waiting to be upskilled on uh, this new way of working right and so we don't have the luxury of time uh, it is imperative that we act fast so this was one of the reasons why we wanted to take this challenge head on and develop a simulation which gives learners a uh, a safe learning environment for them to ex you know experience a new reality and hone their skills real quick i'm also an avid quizzer so i'm going to quiz you a little bit uh over here the answer is all, already here um who said these words it's the best of times it's the worst of times a famous novel starts with these uh, f uh these words which novel am i talking about and who is the author It's the best of times, and it's the worst of times. The book came out many, many, many years ago. It's a classic, but somehow those words ring true even today. I'm not seeing an answer yet, so I'm going to reveal this to you. This is uh, Anand gets it right. Ten virtual points to you as well, Anand. Charles Dickens um, from the book The Tale of Two Cities. Somehow, when you read these lines, it it almost seems like the author was talking about. the digital age it's a best of times because we have superhuman capabilities today because of digital it's a worst of times because jobs are getting automated away uh, workplaces are becoming dehumanized social media is um, a, a place for trolls and so on right it's not a very uh, safe place to be in uh, but that's essentially the nature of any transformation you've, you've got the goods you've got the bads as well so how do we find our own path and navigate so in this path what is very important is the rate of change Jack Welch has this very famous saying right uh, a quote from him when the rate of change on the outside exceeds the rate of change on the inside the end is near right and so we saw this uh, more than 50% of the companies on the fortune 500 list have disappeared from that list in the last 20 years right because of digital so we know this to be true now what research also tells us is the following that only 30% of digital transformations end up succeeding now that begs a question right why is this percentage so low and we've been talking about this number for a pretty long time um and it seemed to us at nolscape that initiatives fail not because they are bad ideas but because they are badly championed because there is an art and science of introducing a transformation in the workplace somehow i don't think we've mastered that yet so for all of these reasons we thought we should take this head on and develop a simulation product but to really get an industry perspective on this we've got an expert as i mentioned earlier uh, really uh, grateful to have ravi with us today uh, ravi is the head of lnd global learning campus at siemens india uh, he has a pretty illustrious background i can't do justice to all of his accomplishments but suffices to say that um, he has expertise in driving digital learning strategy across india and, and the globe and he is at the forefront of digital transformation and uh, his organization siemens has been at the cutting edge of industry 4.0 and we will pick on his brains in the next few minutes and try and understand how they did this in their organization uh, welcome ravi uh, to this product launch event really thankful to you for taking this time off thanks for inviting rajiv look forward Great. to it yeah so i've got a few questions for you um, ravi so i'll i'll flash it on the screen for the benefit of everyone uh, the first one is why is this number so low 30% what are companies doing wrong and why do so many companies fail when it comes to digital transformation ravi if i may if you may allow me to flip this question and yeah. possibly look at why do a company succeed i think the answer would possibly lie there wow okay uh looking at more the positive side of it 
Yes. So to me, uh, some of the organizations that succeed is because they have very well defined the purpose of yep. their existence, and and digital plays a very big role inside that. Um, so I I will relate this to our own organization where we have very clearly articulated what is our core business, what is that we want to do globally, and and over a period of time in the last four to five years, we have really strengthened our core by by actually carving out some of our non-core businesses while we still own them, but yeah. we are still carved out. And now we are saying that we are really focused in terms of creating value for the customer. So yeah. I think having a strong, uh, a very clear purpose of what you want to do and a vision of how uh, or where you want to get to. So these are two important things in my mind to start with. The second thing is, of course, uh, many organizations do have their products and, and of course, technology is something which is easily available in the market. Uh, I don't think so. The likes of Siemens or ABB or Schneider or all these competitive companies, uh, if you really compare them technology wise, we are not very different. I mean, gone are those days where technology will be differentiator. What would differentiate us from each other uh, is of course uh, the purpose vision, then the strategy, right? Of how are we going to go there? And very important, which is something that we all miss out uh, is the mindsets. And when we talk about mindsets is the people, what is the readiness of our people to get there, right? So these are few uh, key things that I feel that define the success of transformation. Great, thank you so much for that, Ravi. Uh, I think you hit the nail there. Uh, so second question is, what are companies doing um, to improve the odds of success from an industry perspective, is there an insight you can share or specifically at Siemens, what were breaking your um, you know, vision and purpose and capabilities down to probably some tangible steps? What did Siemens do to improve the odds of success? So being an L&D professional, first let me wear the L&D hat and answer this question. So I was talking to my CEO almost two years back and uh, he threw me a question and he said that, uh, Ravi, the biggest challenge that I have is today uh, we have largely been in the past a product uh, organization and a project organization where we are selling products or projects uh, to the customers and we are working on it. Now, suddenly we are focusing on digital. We are talking about digitalization and digitalization is not too far back, two to three years back when the sudden push on digitalization started. Yeah. And uh, the biggest challenge that he threw to me was that can we have all the people of the organization speak a common language? Yeah. So if our customer is asking what is digitalized digitalization in a in a sales meet, and if there are three people Siemens sitting on the same table, can three people from Siemens speak the same definition of what is digitalization? Interesting. Right. And that was the biggest challenge to thrown to us. So can we create a common language around what we want to do? So having Purpose is good, having vision is good, strategy is good, but do we have a common language? So that's the first thing. Uh, and that, that's where I, I link it then further to the next uh, element of it, which is culture. So, and here we are talking about digital culture. So how do we create a digital culture? So here mindset comes inside it, having open organization comes inside it. One of the examples of, of how we really try to work on this is that, we try to uh, move away from the old office infrastructure to more open offices. Now, yeah. This also creates an opportunity for people to come together and have open conversation. So digital culture does not mean that you understand technology. It is also about agility. It is also about learning agility. It is about speed, uh, all of that, right? So can we create work on digital culture? The second element is, can we learn from uh, so in Siemens, we say uh, it was it would have been great if Siemens knew what Siemens knew. It's being such a large organization. Yeah. There's so many good things happening in the company. So there are a lot of use cases. Can we bring those use cases together? There's so many vendors that we are working with. Can we bring them together? There's so many technical experts within the organization. Can we leverage them? So I think these are some of the things uh, that, that are important. But if you really look at some of the basic things that, that organizations are doing uh, is to move away from the conventional way of hierarchy driven organization to look at how we can become non-hierarchical, uh, drive innovation, uh, push for learning from mistakes. So mistakes are good, 
Uh, yeah. But how do we learn from them? Those are some of the important things uh, around uh, digitalization. And one very important thing is uh, when we talk about digital solutions, more often than not, uh, we don't know what the end product will finally look like for the customer. So do, is our organization and the people ready for co-creation? Can I sit yeah. along with the customer's uh, technical team and my technical team and together co-create a solution? I think these are some of the things that uh, we have tried to do over the past many years. That's awesome, Ravi. So I'm just going to summarize this real quick. I think every point you made um, is so valuable. One is to develop that common language across the organization. Everybody uh, speaks the same language. And digital culture where uh, hierarchies give way to a more collaborative uh, way of working. And from our experience, we do see that bringing the entire organization together, uh, all the use cases and bringing the solutions together, the silos within the organization have to be broken down. All right, so that's a big cultural imperative. Then, um, of course, the, working with the ecosystem, you spoke about co-creation, so very important, right? So it's not just about your product, but how does it sit in the ecosystem? So your worldview suddenly becomes more expanded. It's not just about you, your products, but how are you co-opting uh, the rest of the ecosystem uh, becomes a crucial success factor. I think those points are really well made. So now, uh, when you started your uh, digital transformation process, how do you how did you identify the champions? Who who did you think were uh, uh, people that were ready to uh, drive the change forward? It was a tricky stuff for us because in a true sense, we had very limited people who were really there. So the first step for us was to identify people who are already working on digital pro projects uh, and uh, people who are progressive, who have the growth mindset, who are futuristic, who can really spot uh, so when I was giving you an example of what my CEO said, that can we have a common language, the another task that he gave me was that uh, in today's world, when my sales guy goes to the customer's uh, shop, can he spot something which he would in a normal situation generally not spot? Okay. Right. So I'll give you a simple example. Uh, let's say an electronics engineer who is going to customer's manufacturing unit uh, and he's going to sell his product to the customer. Tomorrow in a digital world, he's not only going to sell the product, but he's also going to sell the API, which will connect this product to the cloud using all the digital technologies. And therefore he or she needs to understand how does the API look like? What is the architecture? What are the technology used on the API? Can this API link with the customer's infrastructure or not? And these are something which is very different from conventionally how these people have been working. And then comes the question that are these people willing to change at what yes. age bracket they are, right? Yes. At this age bracket after working for 20, 25 years, are they willing to change? And yep. more often than not, your senior leaders, all of them uh, would have more than 20, 25 years of experience. How do you bring about a mindset shift there? So that's what we did. We looked at some of the young colleagues, some of the mix of experience and young colleagues who are working on this topic and then identified them, took them through a very systematic journey of being a digital champion. Uh, we have more than 50, 60 odd people who are championing this process in the, in the company at this moment with a very clear leader who's driving this digital strategy in every business. Got it, that's amazing. So last question I have, um, Ravi, is what are some capabilities needed to become a digital transformation champion? The one thing that I took uh, from what you said just now is, you said you picked some young people as well. So is this level based? Uh, are you looking for certain uh, years of experience to be a champion or is this, could be, could this be anyone? I think it's all in the mind, uh, Rajiv. Uh, young is not by age, young is by the mind, right? Okay. So I have some of the champions in our organization who are 25, 30 years experience as well. Uh, so it's not about uh, young by age, but it's really somebody who can create disruption, who understands uh, what innovation is all about, who, who is willing to learn, who, is, who has the curiosity to stretch, work in uncomfortable situations, who, who is mobile, who is flexible. So we are really looking at those kind of people. So I, I feel uh, the first and the foremost requirement for being a digital champion is to have the right mindset. If you do not have the right mindset, then you can never get there. Technology is something that you can still learn, right? Uh, but if you don't have the right mindset, you can never be there. So the mindset is, is the number one in my list. 
and then comes of course exposure to technology uh, and third is of course uh, you know are we having customer in the mind when we are looking at the solution so you know some some elements of design thinking critical thinking so do i have those kind of skills as well or not so these are some of the skills that i i would say that uh, a champion should possess great thank you so much ravi for uh, those insights um, really grateful to you for taking this time and um, you know sharing your valuable insights with uh, the community here really appreciate this yeah i think uh, these are some important things in in the journey i mean we have been working together over the many years uh, since we have started this journey we have used some of your simulations uh, and and my learning always has been is that Uh, if you focus on creating the right minds, uh, the the processes are always uh, something that can be crafted. Right? It's it's more about the, the the mindset that you need to work on. Great, thank you so much, Ravi. Thank you. So uh, moving further along, uh, let's now look at uh, the simulation product launch. We just heard from Ravi how important it is um, to look at. digital holistically from an ecosystem standpoint uh from a mindset standpoint that's exactly what we have attempted to do here so i'll uh, quickly introduce you to the product uh, the team has been working on this um tirelessly i'd like to congratulate the product management team the designers the developers everybody who um has put in hours and hours of effort to make this come alive uh, the content team and everybody uh, at nowscape so congratulations to all of you and to our uh, industry partners clients and so on who have given their valuable insights uh, for us to build this um, uh, into a, a world class product so let me walk you through this um, really excited to go do a quick demo as well um, so firstly this simulation addresses very important um, you know digital transformation priorities it provides a platform to experience transformation at scale so many of us are doing this for the first time can we create um, a simulated environment a safe learning environment for people to practice their skills right um so it also hopefully inspires leaders to build a digital mindset building on what ravi just mentioned and in the process uh, can we also develop a data driven mindset to equip organizations for transformation initiatives so not everything is uh, touchy feely we need to look at uh, data and we need to create a balanced uh, decision making process so those are some elements that we have built into the simulation so from a business outcome perspective uh, at the end of this journey it's not just about the product it is just um, the entire ecosystem of solutions we have created around it including assessments including the learning content the simulation all of that um, the end outcome is as ravi mentioned can we identify those 100 200 people uh, that are ready to take the organization to the next level and this can be done at scale as well uh when the organization is trying to cascade this to the entire uh, to different levels uh within the organization so that they can accelerate the transformation process specifically learning outcomes uh we equip the learner with the knowledge skills understanding needed to um analyze and prepare the ecosystem for digital transformation different uh ways of influencing stakeholders aligning strategy capability and culture those are some of the building blocks that we help uh, the learners with and the target audience uh, interestingly um, you know we've been interacting with a lot of uh, industry folks although we uh, peg it at a mid managerial level you just heard what uh, ravi mentioned this can actually get started at some junior levels as well high potentials uh, starting from individual contributors all the way to you know business unit heads we need championing to be done at all levels within the organization and we do believe that this uh, product can be uh, quite useful and the simulation duration is configurable anywhere from 20, 45 minutes to a 75 minutes and that's just a simulation experience which is preceded by some knowledge acquisition and the debrief and i want to touch upon uh, the frameworks as you know nowscape uh, whatever we do uh, we tend to anchor our products to solid frameworks things that we can go back and apply at work right and although we are a top 20 gamification company in the world gamification is not just for engagement it is for deep insights and that comes from the frameworks we use so in this particular simulation we've used uh, three specific frameworks uh, one is called um, the ad car framework i think many of you must be familiar with this uh, it is a um, very interesting framework which uh, talks about how to drive systematic change in an organization starting with awareness building desire knowledge ability and reinforcement which often times we forget uh, which is very important for creating stickiness so adcar is one framework that we have used 
The other framework is this equation you see on top. It's a fundamental element of the uh, simulation. We believe that digital outcomes can happen only when digital strategy, and remember what Ravi mentioned, he said the starting point is a vision and purpose, and the strategy which can then be understood by the rest of the organization. Without that, we are basically flying blind. So that has to be in place, and the alignment has to be created. The second element is digital capabilities, uh, which I, I think is both hard and soft capabilities, which are in line with the digital strategy. And digital culture encompasses leadership, it encompasses uh, mindsets and so on, which gets done at scale. It is only when all the three elements come together can we really talk about digital outcomes. And the other framework that we've used in the simulation is digital blur. And I spoke about the book um, from Nolscape a couple of uh, years ago. And this has been used by 40 plus organizations um, uh, in today's context. Essentially, BLUR stands for these four different dimensions from boundaryless organizations all the way to relentless iteration. Each one of these four dimensions uh, calls for a certain transformation to happen. For example, boundaryless organizations is usually mapped to platforms. And today you know how companies are making a mad rush towards platforms. Limitless digitization is all about uh, data literacy. That's a major transformational initiative that's happening in many organizations. Unbounded innovation is more client-centric behaviors, more about design thinking, co-creation, and so on. And relentless iteration is all about agility, right? So take any of these transformations, ultimately it boils down to the art and science of rolling that out inside, inside an organization and eventually ensuring success. So what I'd like to do at this point in time is um, you know, give you a quick walkthrough of the simulation. And I'd like to do this in an interactive uh, fashion. Uh, so I'm going to show you the simulation and uh, you will help me play this game, right? And that's how we thought we'll make this a, a massively multiplayer game. Uh, so I'll quickly walk you through this. I'm going to stop my screen share, bring up the software, and then we can start playing this together. All right. So uh, you're able to see my screen, I hope. This is uh, the launch of the simulation uh, that I've been speaking about uh, so far. It's called the Digital Transformation Champion Simulation. And in all of our simulations, as you know, uh, it is role-based, right? You assume the role of a certain individual. In this particular simulation, you are stepping into the shoes of a director of an innovations lab at this bank called the Mighty Oak Bank. It's one of the biggest banks in the region. So let's uh, get into the situation here. As you know, many banks and many industries across uh, the world have been introducing new platforms, right? And I spoke about how boundaryless we are becoming. So this organization also has launched a new platform called Acon, right? And you are uh, the mastermind behind Acon uh, as part of the Innovations Lab. Uh, but there is a lot of anxiety around this platform because it's transformational, it's going to be disruptive, and so on. So the board has um, you know, alarmed you about uh, the possible resistance that can happen. But senior level alignment is there, board level alignment is there. But how do you now cascade this change into the organization? So that's essentially what the challenge is going to be. And uh, outsiders, there are naysayers who are saying this is going to fail. And although there is one particular board member, Nico, who is going to stay with you through this entire exercise. So you will get a lot of mentorship as you play the game. Now, how do you know uh, you've succeeded in the simulation? In the next uh, uh, two months or three months, whatever the duration of the simulation is, you should try to achieve 65% adoption of the platform within the ecosystem. Why 65? It is basically because then you've crossed the mainstream, right? You've crossed the, uh, the threshold for, and you've crossed the chasm, as, uh, so to speak, right? So that's why that's significant. But alongside with that, we need to also improve um, strategic alignment, bring it to a 70% within the organization, build capabilities and also build cultural fitment. So that's your success metric within the uh, simulation. Now, so that's the organization that you're going to be dealing with, right? So you notice that is you, right? So you're the director of this organization. As we mentioned earlier, you are part of the innovation lab and there is the CEO, there are uh, directors of other business units, and you also notice that some business units have been locked, which means that you cannot roll out anything with these BOs unless you have the buy-in 
from uh, the senior stakeholders in the leadership team. And in addition to your organization, you also have to convince your top clients, right? This is about the ecosystem, as we mentioned earlier. It's not just about your own organization. So you need to get your clients on board. You also need to get your partners on board. So it is a lot more complex than a simple change initiative that can happen within the, uh, the organization. So you need to bring all of these people um, and get their buy-in. So that's the set of actions that you can take to uh, put this transformation uh, process on track. So you'll notice that uh, these actions have been categorized along these dimensions. One is strategy, second is capability, third is culture. I spoke about this framework and this is the manifestation of that framework. So you've got multiple actions you can take on these different stakeholders to get their uh, buy-in, right? So let's uh, take some actions. So this is just to make sure that we get started real quick. Uh, let's take um, an action. So now you'll notice that every action has a cost, right? So this action has about uh, a cost of two days. So which means that when I say proceed, two days will be consumed uh, from my overall budget. And there is also a timer that's ticking. Uh, right, so now let's go ahead and play this game. So the first one I'm going to get started with, uh, the rest I will uh, request one of you to raise your hands, say that, that you'd like to contribute, I'll pick you, and you can actually play the uh, game for all of us. So um, I'm the director here, so how about uh, we... Yes? Thought somebody said something. So, uh, yeah. sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your flow. I raised my hand. I'd like to contribute this. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Savio. Uh, so, I just took an action uh, on the CEO, and uh, I fortunately got a positive response, right? So, and you notice that from day zero, uh, you've jumped to day two, and there's been some positive improvement. But mind you, we took this action blind, we had no idea what this will yield but that's obviously not the right way to go about it. This is just to get you started. Now, um, and this is the uh, feedback from the CEO. He's saying, while I don't doubt the importance of knowing how to operate the platform because you started with the platform experience, my problem is that I don't even know if we need the platform in the first place. This is the CEO's words. What do you make of this, Savio? What is missing here? When the CEO himself is saying, I'm not sure we need this platform. He doesn't know about the impact effectiveness of this uh, solution. That's probably one. And the business uh, viability has not been checked. That's right. In other words, the strategic alignment of this platform for the rest of the organization, right? That has not been thought through. So that's some revelation for you that, you know, even at a CEO level, there's a little bit of pushback that's happening. And that's uh, the metrics. These are the indicators whether you have done well in the game or not. You're on day two out of day 90. Remember, it's a three month experience, which will get over in about 45 minutes to an hour, right? So that's a simulation time. And you need to cross these thresholds that you, that you see here on straight strategy, capability, culture to be able to win uh, this particular game. And in addition to that, the ecosystem also needs to adopt. It's not just your stakeholders within the organization. You need to make sure that the clients and the partners also sign up, right? And as you notice, there is also, um, you know, uh, tips that are coming your way. Uh, you can make use of it at any, any point in time. The minute I press let's start, the timer will start. The earlier action was just for, uh, for trial for us to get a feel for the actions. Now we are actually getting started. Now, uh, Savio, I'm going to come back to you and I'll invite others, uh, the others to, um, you know, volunteer as well. To convince people, you must first know them, right? That's the basic fundamental rule. Uh, click on any of the profile cards to see the vital details that can help you approach them better, right? So let's uh, click on these people. When I click on the CEO, uh, he likes order and predictability. Oh boy. So he's not probably going to be jumping, or sorry, she is not going to be uh, jumping up in joy when you talk about a disruptive change, right? She dislikes disruption. Uh, Reputation dem demanding, but open-minded, open for change, but it has to be very structured, the whole process. Now let's quickly look at the others. Karthik Das likes processes and control, dislikes shortiness and pettiness, so like structure as well. Okay, so let's uh, look at other people. Zuzana, uh, she likes experimenting. It gives you a clue. Maybe your good starting point, right? Could be your um, innovator in your process. 
let me quickly look at the chat window to see if you've got uh, any comments here. Yeah, so uh, one question that has come up is, Shiren, uh, okay, this looks like a change context. Where is the digital transformation component? I hope you can see the, uh, the digital transformation scenario here. It's about co-opting the entire ecosystem. And as we play the game, we will realize it's not a simple change that we are uh, trying to do here. It involves strategic alignment. It involves capability building. It involves cultural dimensions as well. Going beyond just making people say yes uh, to an idea, it impacts the entire organization, all the BUs and so on. Yeah, so, um, all right. So Amit, uh, would you like to contribute? What uh, do you think should be done here? Maybe yeah, your uh, idea is to reach out to Zuzana and see what she has to say. Correct? Yeah, yeah. And then see that, you know, if if we could uh, get in a group of advocates, like, you know, if we identify a network and then we can build that influence. Okay, so Rohul is saying the same thing. Uh, look out for like-minded people who are uh, very keen on making these uh, digital changes, right? So. Uh, something gives you an idea that maybe we should start with strategic alignment because it's a transformational change. Uh, we need some buy-in at uh, senior levels. Does it uh, look like a good idea to present the case to the senior leadership, you know, build a case, tell them what you're trying to do? Yes. Okay, let's try that. So um, when you present a case, obviously what you're presenting matters a lot, right? It's not just... Uh, just about sending them a PowerPoint deck, but what is the core message? And you'll realize that each one of these senior leaders has their own goals for the year, right? Reduce attrition to half. If you look at Zuzana, she's saying reduce loan processing time for her. Automation and efficiency is very important. Uh, ben, on the other hand, wants better turnaround time with respect to insurance uh, policies. Khalil is saying uh, average revenue generated per customer has to go up. So it's, it's a mixed uh, bag that you got here and you need to uh, present a compelling case. And of course the CEO's uh, vision is also very important. Um, so here you're expected to understand where the senior leaders are going with business strategy and align your platform strategy accordingly, right? So it's very important that you uh, present the right story here. I'm going to pick one of these options and see what happens. So I happen to pick the right um, option here because all of them are looking for business metrics to grow, not just vanity metrics. They want uh, this platform to be aligned. And when you spoke about those uh, specific goals they had, you saw this uh, you know, jump in their acceptance level. But uh, really notice uh, it doesn't mean much at this stage because they are hardly at a 21, 15%, which basically means uh, they don't know what you're trying to do. Uh, in addition to that, you may want to get their buy-in on uh, different uh, elements of their policy, right? internal policy. So you need to pay attention to that as well. You need to demonstrate some trends to them uh, so that they are convinced, not just at the start of the initiative, but they need reinforce, uh, reinforcements as they go along. Remember the ADCAR framework, starting from awareness, desire, knowledge, all the way to reinforcement. So it's not a one-time activity. You need to keep uh, them engaged. And you also need to create a roadmap, right? Uh, again, it's a transformation and transformation by definition is a journey. Uh, which spans maybe multiple years. So it's important that you showcase a roadmap to them. Let's try and do that, right? So they, that gave some positive uh, impact as well. I seem to be doing the right things here so far. Also notice that uh, they are not ready for funding. Why is that the case? What should happen for them to say, okay, now I'm willing to invest. And without that, you cannot run major initiatives, right? So you cannot run pilots, you cannot do thought leadership sessions, you cannot do webinars, you cannot build culture at scale, you do need funding, right? But you need, you need to cross that initial threshold with the senior leaders before you can get to that stage. You see the BUs are locked at the moment, but once they are convinced enough, each one of these um, you know, BU heads are going to say, okay, now I'm opening up my BU for this particular platform. So you need to reach that state. And not to forget uh, the ecosystem as well, right? So we need to be able to approach them. You can arrange interviews with uh, some of these people, get their outside in perspective. In this case, notice that uh, Alan uh, is not too enthusiastic and he has given you his reasons. And did you also notice something else that happened? 
while Alan went down on his uh, on his acceptance level, something else happened in the organization. Did you notice that? Yeah, Ben's acceptance level, I think it came down. Yeah, so uh, so one of the internal stakeholders, their acceptance level goes down because obviously you want to do things that are right for the customers. And if your top customers are saying no to it, obviously that dampens your spirits, right? So then you get a clear idea that just getting these people on board is not enough. I need to spend enough time with my clients, my partners, get them to a certain threshold, make them the champions, put outside in pressure on the organization so that internal inertia can be broken. Right. So those are things that you can do on the strategy side. Um, you can seek funding. You can discover more background about these people. At the moment, it is all locked up. You only know so much about their point of view on the initiative. But as you engage with them, they uh, reveal more. And from a capability perspective, uh, as you open up the BUs, uh, you can uh, run pilots with them. You can uh, organize hackathons. You can share webinars. Each one of these um, actions, again, has a day cost. Right? And they will all have different impact depending on the BU's readiness. And each BU has its own readiness level. They have their own quirks and so on. And you can also uh, give them the experience platform for a trial use. You can kickstart innovation, stuff that you can do under capability. Similarly, under culture, uh, there are multiple things you can do. You know, use, use social media to great, um, to great effect to build awareness. You can build internal networks to influence these stakeholders, um, recognize co-champions. Uh, it's very important to bring other people uh, as part of your initiative. You, you're not a single person army. So how do you bring other co-champions into the initiative to build momentum? That's very important. You can crowdsource inputs because for a large organization, you cannot do this all by yourself. You do need uh, certain inputs to come from the rest of the organization and you can execute campaigns and so on. So wide list of actions, um, right? And all of these are mapped to ADCAR internally. Some of them are awareness related actions. Others are desire creating actions and others are reinforcement actions. So the trick is in taking the right actions at the right time on the right people and you start seeing change happen. And each one of these individuals also uh, will have their own risk appetite. We have seen that um, from their profile. So the sequence in which you do this also matters quite a lot. And ultimately, uh, you need to cross these thresholds on strategy, capability, culture. You need to co-opt the ecosystem. And um, you, you need to basically make sure that this platform gets adopted by the end of the simulation exercise. So that's a quick uh, walkthrough of the simulation. I want to pause here. Uh, anything that uh, intrigues you from what you've just seen? So Rajiv Savio here, if I may speak. Yes, Savio. Yeah. Uh, so what I really like is this module is the, the need of PR for all program managers across organizations because it helps and build that sensitivity towards understanding stakeholders better and stakeholder management really gets a push because of something like this. So thank you for this. Sure. Thanks, Avi, for that. Um, and the, of course, the key point here is how do you build that level of support, not just within your organization, but you're selling digital solutions to your clients guess what, their organization is traditional, right? And so you need to be able to understand what can actually move the needle for them, uh, right? So it's both inside out and outside in, which is very different from a traditional change related exercise. So uh, please keep the questions and comments coming. There's something very interesting I wanna show you as well uh, from a reporting standpoint, right? So this uh, simulation, as I mentioned, goes on for about 45 minutes to about an hour. At the end of this, every individual is able to, um, download a report, which gives them a mirror to look at, so to speak, right? Uh, in terms of becoming a digital transformation champion, do you have the right capabilities, right? And just to quickly summarize, in the simulation, we would have touched upon these three major frameworks. It gives them in an experiential format, the ability to drive ad car through the organization, align strategy, capability, culture, and also uh, live through a process of blur, clearing the digital blur within the organization. And that's what uh, the learners get at the end of the simulation experience. Uh, a report which gives them in threadbare detail, the red, amber, green on multiple competencies to begin with, what is your transformation champion score? Do you have a novice level ability all the way to a role model kind of ability? This allows you to pick your right, um, you know, transformation champions, right? Within your organization. And it is anchored to two uh, leadership competencies. One is transformational leadership. Are you able to think about the big picture? 
and drive alignment and digital dexterity, which is all about understanding the nuances of driving something in the digital space. So, um, and there were multiple objectives, 75% adoption and so on. It gives you great detail on how you went about doing this. And it also does a double click on uh, digital dexterity here across the blur framework. Did you demonstrate outside an awareness? Did you network within the organization? Did you harness data? Did you uh, narrate the right story with data? Remember the options that were available to you somewhere in the story format, others were just bullet points, right? So were you able to, at the right time, use the right narrative to get a buy-in within the organization? It also shows you the ad car um, you know, maturity, where you able to drive um, you know, ad car through the organization, ensure that everybody reaches the finish line. So it's pretty detailed. I'm just showing you the highlights of the report, pages three, eight, and seven over here. But when you look at the report, it uh, goes into a lot of detail into the kind of actions and what worked, what didn't work, nuggets of um, information on what you can do going back to work. So that was actually my last slide. Um, I'd like to now open this up for a q and I'm sure um, I'm preaching to the choir here. Most of you are experiencing this issue in your uh, organization. So would love to hear your uh, comments, feedback, and thoughts. Uh, or challenges that you're facing in your organization and uh, how potentially you know, developing digital transformation champions can uh, help you.